Hey, how are you guys? Welcome to the video. Little video today about our 2019 Y62 Patrol rear storage setup. We've done a few different options in the back and this is basically what we've ended up with. Trying to keep it simple and practical at the same time. Stay tuned, we'll show you around and let you know what we've got. So firstly, a bit of background info on what we've had previously. We used to have a twin metal drawer set up along the back here. Uh, we had a MSA drop down slide up here with the Waco CFX 75 litre fridge up on top. This was a great setup for our first part of owning the car. It's such a big boot space in the back that you've got an endless amount of options as to what you can do. It's quite a bit larger in the back compared to most other cars. I'll try and put some footage up now of what the old setup used to look like and sort of, you know, what it involved. It was quite good for what it was. We actually recovered the drawers in black carpet, uh, which we thought sort of matched the car a little bit better. And we had the same done with the new custom setup as well. You can see it was quite a good setup. It was quite practical. It did everything we needed to do. This was also before we got the caravan as well. So the bigger fridge was quite useful. We were always filling the fridge all up to the top with drinks and food. We have two children and Bianca and I. Having the caravan now, it sort of renders that a bit uh, pointless having such a big fridge, although we do tend to fill it up with drinks when we do go away. It gave us the option to rearrange the back of the car a little bit. Our old setup did everything we needed it to do. Quite a bit of storage in the back with twin drawers. Had the drop down slide, which made it easier to get into the fridge. Bianca's a little bit shorter than me, so having it up on top of the drawers did make it quite difficult by the time it's up this tall so that was really good we had the big fridge the cfx 75 litre waco uh, which for us was a great size we did always tend to fill it up on our bigger trips we've got two little children obviously ollie and kiana it did everything we needed it to do so it was great our main issue with the old setup was the rattles the rattles no matter what we did we did everything we could to try and fix the rattles mainly with the msa drop down slide but also with the uh, metal drawer system as well, which is quite common. Being in a wagon, you hear everything. We determined that after mucking around with that drawer system, that we were starting to think about wanting to change uh, the setup in the rear of the car. The other thing that really got us as well was weight. So it's quite important to keep an eye on the weights of your four wheel drive as well. Um, just to be safe and stay within the legal limits. So as I said, this is our 2019 Y62 Nissa Patrol. Our GVM is three and a half ton. We have a caravan that we use, which has sort of allowed us to change the rear setup, downsize the fridge a little bit, and also it sort of led us to need or want to look at our weights in the car as well. So we were pretty close to GVM, if not right on GVM. Most of the time we were heading away with our rooftop and our older setup. Now that we've got the caravan, put 250 kilos on the bull weight, and uh, you have to start losing a bit of weight out of the car by the time you've got a car full of kids and uh, and the missus as well. Herein lies our new vision of our new setup. So our main our objective was to simplify things, lose a bit of weight and just make things a lot nicer to travel with as well and easier to use. I think we've ticked off all those boxes with our new setup. The guys we dealt with were Adelaide Draw Systems. We contacted them through Facebook, went back and forth a little bit and uh, we came to a design and a time frame that really, really suit us very well. We did this just before our last big trip uh, heading up to the Cape and our timeline and schedule was quite tight. And as you probably know, at the moment, everything's a six month wait, if not more, whether you go MSA uh, drawers, ARB drawers or anything like that that's pre-made, everything's going to take a long time to get. So Adelaide Draw Systems, uh, he was really, really good to get along with. He had some great ideas. Uh, real thorough with his measurements and everything as well and going back and forth and getting a lot of good info to make sure that the end product we ended up with was exactly what we needed and wanted. I'll throw some footage up of our older setup just showing you exactly what we had and what it looked like. It was really useful and good like I said it was just the rattles and weight so we needed to change it for that side of things. The Waco 75 litre CFX fridge never really had a problem with it at all it was a really good fridge can't speak bad about it. Size wise it was really good for the four of us as I said, we've got two kids and two adults. So having some of it as a freezer, some of it as a fridge and even a drinks cooler as well, it was really handy and a good size. The Patrol, as you may or may not know, is quite a large car. It's got a massive boot in the back. So the MSA drop slide, even in saying that, came to about halfway over the boot, maybe a tiny bit more. In a smaller car, the MSA drop down slide to suit the 75 litre fridge is a massive, massive slide and it weighs an absolute ton. I'll put some info down below here about the size and weight of the MSA drop down slide, just so you can get an idea of exactly how big it really is. The twin metal drawers that we had in the old setup were just some Titan or King's rear drawers. They were pretty well priced back when we first got the car and we wanted to head away fairly quickly. 
and that sort of suited everything that we were trying to do at the time. It was a bit of a compromise, obviously. We would, would have much preferred to have a better quality drawer in there or, or a, uh, a better brand in there, so to speak. Um, but we ended up ripping all the carpet off these drawers and uh, covering them in black carpet and just sort of modifying them a little bit. They were really good for the time. It was just the rattles and the weight. Yeah, basically, it always comes back to the, the rattles and the weight. There's a ton of brands at the moment that do false floors for the Y62. Dash has just done his own uh, new false floor, which looks absolutely awesome. I'll put a link below if you want to go and check out David Dash's false floors. There's also Full Bore. Full Bore have been doing the drawers um, and the false floors for a long time, ever since you know this, the Y62s first came out. We did contact them initially for the drawers, um, but again, it was a six month plus wait and, uh, and they were quite a bit more expensive than the, our end result as well. So um, I've heard nothing but good things about full bores. Another little thing we had in our old setup was on the back of the MSA drop down slide, we had a clear view table. So having the car as a standalone living resource and that's the only thing you have, you wanna try and keep it quick and simple for setups and um, you know pulling over and making lunch and that sort of thing. So yeah, we had a clear view table that clips onto the MSA drop down slide. Again, that was great for what it was. A little bit of a pain in the ass trying to store it. We had it slide down between the car and the fridge um, and that was all right for what it was. But that sort of led us to add to this setup as well. We definitely knew that we wanted uh, a large table just for when we want to pull over and, and um, make lunch for the kids or get food out of prepare or anything or fix anything if we're on the road as well. It was really handy. So that was a good stepping stone to knowing what we wanted for our next setup. All right. now the good stuff our new setup let me show you around and show you what we've got i'll put a link below to the adelaide draw systems facebook page as well so you can contact him if you have any inquiries or uh, want to get an idea on what something could cost or if something's possible i want to note that he's actually really creative in his thinking for the back of the car as well he's some of the jobs that he had there when we were there that he sort of put on the side for us to finish this real quick were amazing so you know curvatures and and filling gaps and all sorts of stuff so he's a really great person to talk to i recommend talking to him all right let's show you around our new setup so we've got the custom drawers by Adelaide Draw Systems, custom made to suit our setup. On the left, we've got the Evercool draw fridge. I'll show you inside, but basically it's fairly sturdy. We can put a carton of beer in here. Um, the only issue is that the bottles don't fit in there, so long necks don't fit in there. It is mainly for cans. The cans do stand up nicely in there and you can fit a whole carton in there, no problems. You can fit quite a bit of food in there. Like I said, for our setup personally, we use our caravan for all of our food and then we use our fridge for all of our drinks. So the kids' drinks and our drinks are both in here um, and no rattles or noises or anything. When you've got a full fridge in here, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't seem to be an issue at all. The fridge, I'll put up some measurements now, width, depth, and height and also i'll show you some footage of the fridge before we put it into the car as well so you can see on the back of the fridge that the compressor is quite large it does say in the instructions that it does need ventilation as well so keep that in mind we actually hole sawed some holes um, in the back of the drawer system just to allow some good ventilation and i might even put a little computer fan in there down the track just in case it ever needs it We've just been up to the Cape where it was quite humid and warm and the fridge was running pretty much constantly non-stop. And you can hear that the fridge does run a lot more than probably what it should be doing when it's in a real hot climate. So having that extra uh, fan on the back helps circulate all the cold air or fresh air around the back of the compressor, I think will make a really big difference. The fridge is a freezer or a fridge. So it's a, um, it's not a dual zone, but you can change whether you want it to be a freezer or a fridge as well. It's quite a handy fridge, easy to open. It's got a little handle on top. And then this section actually comes out as well. Um, so it's actually quite basic. I'll show you around the fridge now, but you can see on the front of it's fairly simple. It's got a nice mating surface around the edge and inside it's all um, it's all hollow and, and a normal fridge in there. So this bit can be taken out. And the center bit divider can be uh, taken out as well. And it does move and can re refit quite easy. The only complaint I would probably have about the fridge if I was to uh, try and think of some is when you do stand the cans up in there, if they're not tight in there, they do rub together a little bit and you can see the discolour in that uh, plastic tub and that's from the cans rubbing around. The only reason it's really done that is because we've just done the PDR, done a lot of real bad dirt roads, uh, really bad corrugations for a two month straight. So whether that would happen under normal conditions, I'm not sure, It'd be something to watch out for though. The only other bad thing about the fridge that I'd talk about as well is the fact that the long necks or the bottles don't fit in there standing up. 
you do have to lay them down or in our circumstance we just used cans for the trip so apart from that it's a really great fridge easy to get to the kids can get to it it's a good height it fits in the drawers really really nicely it looks quite smart as well being a satin black and i'll put a link below for where we got the fridge from. We got the fridge from My Generator. They deliver Australia wide and they were the cheapest for this fridge at the time. So we've actually got a code that you can use site wide on My Generator as well. Uh, it's ABA20. It'll give you $20 off anything over $300. And that obviously includes this fridge. Price-wise, when we bought the fridge, it was between $900 and $1,000. It sort of varies up and down between those price points. But anywhere from $1,000 and under is a really great price for this fridge. All right, on the right-hand side, first of all, I'll go to the table. We've got a really cool table here. It's a massive table with a stainless steel top. It does lock out as well. Real sturdy. Um, he's done a really good job with this. And it does fit underneath the drawer, which is really, really handy for us. So again, we uh, you had a couple of options. He was going to custom build anything that we wanted, but we came to the conclusion that having the table on the bottom was going to be better for us. Um, mainly height-wise for the patrol, it's quite tall. We've got 35s on the patrol as well. No lift at the moment, but that might be something we'll look at down the track. So this table on the bottom was a good option for us and uh, it's easy to get to. Even the kids can reach this one as well. Width-wise and length-wise, it's the full length of the drawers and it's the full width of this drawer as well. So it's, it's a huge table, uh, real sturdy. Having the stainless steel on top is quite handy for cleaning as well. Working really well for us so far. And then the drawer above the table as well. So we've got locking mechanism on the slides it does lock out as well nice and sturdy again pretty heavy duty and he'll give you the option to see what you want to do with the different weights and different size slides again in the back of the patrol it's massive it's huge you've got so much space in there to do whatever you want with for us this is a really good size we wanted to get as much of a drawer as we could next to the fridge so they worked out really well this drawer is probably about 400 wide and i'd say probably about 200 tall um, so you can fit a ton of stuff in here we've got these real handy canvas bags in here with our first aid kits and blankets we've got our navigator shovel another spare solar panel sunshades all our electrical gear and another canvas bag and then we've got a toasty maker which is probably pretty important as well so there's a huge amount of room in here uh, you can store a ton of stuff we mainly keep this for uh, things that we want to be able to access quite easily on our trips if something was to happen like having all the electrical goods in there um, so we can do some soldering or fix any wiring or anything like that we've also got another tall canvas bag that we usually put in here when we haven't got the blanket in there so that's what we keep in the drawer so the other thing we did compared to our old setup is we had all our electrical switches and plugs and sockets and everything down the sides of the drawers because we wanted to try and make the drawers as big and large as possible to make use of that space we've moved all the electrical switches up here um, and then on this side we've got our 240 plugs we've got our usbs and our cigarette lighter sockets we've also got up here our renergy battery monitor this thing is absolutely awesome i've got a video on it i'll put a link up here to the video just explaining how it works and what it does but it's a really really good battery monitor it has a 500 amp shunt it's lithium ready it tells you a ton of info on this side we've got the safari touch switches again these are getting really, really popular with all the patrol guys and a lot of other people as well. Such a neat looking switch. They sit flush in here as well. I'll give you a close up now of what the switch looks like, but they're all soft touch switches. Um, turn the compressor on. There's also a Bluetooth model as well, a smart switch that you can get. But we've got all our lights on here. We've got our lights at the top in the door. We've got our lights left and right on the side of the roof rack as well. So just a close up look of our 240 volt and inverter our USBs, our cigarette lighter socket, and our Renergy battery monitor. All of our electrics sit behind the drawer system. This setup also eliminates losing half of the space on top of the drawers to the fridge and the drop slide. So we've got a full back seat now uh, where we can chuck all of our stuff. Up on the right hand side, we've got the Travel Buddy oven. We don't use that a whole heap to be honest, not as much as we originally thought we would, but it has come in handy on some trips, especially this trip just gone. Obviously we're doing some big driving throughout the day with the kids. Uh, we can chuck the sausage rolls or whatever you want to put in the back. And then by the time you're halfway or get to where you're going, the stuff's ready in the oven. So when we do go to use it, it is really handy. We just don't use it as much as we originally thought we would. All of our electrical system is hidden behind the drawers. So we've got a panel on the back of the drawer system that everything bolts to. Everything works really, really well in this car. I'm really happy. I probably wouldn't change anything unless I was going to increase the battery volume. But uh, we run an iTech 120 amp lithium battery. It's been a great battery. It does everything we need to do. 
I'll put a link up above here to the video where we installed the battery a little while back. I'll put a link below to the details of the battery. Coming up to now, we've not had any drums at all with the battery. It's been a really great battery. I might add another one down there. This battery lays down on its side under our false floor. So it's out of sight, the seats fold back and you can't see it and you probably never need to look at it, to be honest. We run an Enerdrive 40 plus DC charger. This charger has been awesome. We've had that since we've got the car originally. We used to have two SSB deep cycle batteries laying down on the side under the drawers. They were extremely heavy, as you can imagine. I think, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure they're about 33 kilos each. So we had 66 kilos of batteries in the back and then changing to that lithium made a massive difference uh, just by itself. And uh, being able to lay that on its side and uh, under the false floor makes a big difference and it's hidden out of the way. So it's just something you don't need to look at or worry about, which is great. We run an Enerdrive 40 plus DC charger. We can get up to 50 amps of charge with this DC charger that we've seen on our monitor. So Enerdrive make it quite well known that if you oversize your wiring in the car install, you can actually see over and above what they're quoted amperage is on their chargers. So the 40 plus, the plus with our oversized wiring, we've seen up to 50 amps of charge going into this lithium battery. And obviously the lithium battery will take it as well. Lithium's great like that. If your battery needs charge, uh, the lithium will accept charge all the way, full charge all the way up to uh, just before it's at full charge. Your deep cycle batteries will always uh, have a linear curve on their charge cycle. So um, the more and more full they get, the less and less amps they'll take until they get to that full point. Whereas a lithium will take a full charge pretty much all the way to, you know, 98, 99%, depending on which battery and brand you have. But that was a really good thing about switching to lithium for us is knowing that we can put up to 50 amps into that battery it'll charge up all the way up and take 50 amps almost to full so that works really really well just charges a lot quicker and it's just a lot better battery basically the other thing we've got down there we've got a 3000 watt inverter that inverter works really well it's just a uh, no name brand it's not an expensive inverter um, but it works really really well we did a lot of research and just bought the one that we thought was uh, best value for the money at the time it is something we've carried over from our original setup as well We've got our 240 volt plugs uh, just on the side here and we've got our little switch to turn the inverter on and off. The inverter works really well, can't fault it. I'll put a link below if you want to have a look at the inverter as well. So that's our setup guys. We've had a ton of questions lately on our Cape York trip videos, just asking what kind of setup we've got in the back or asking questions about the fridge. So I hope this video can sort of clarify that and give you some good ideas on what you want to do with your patrol if you are on the waiting list to get one because I know there's a ton of people waiting to get patrols at the moment so the popularity has really taken off which is great. Even if you don't have a patrol, this fridge is awesome. In a smaller car, I'd probably watch out for the size. You would have seen the, the sizes that I listed earlier so make sure it's going to fit in there nicely and you've got the depth and the width without uh, losing too much space next to it. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you want to give us a like, that'd be great, and give us a subscribe as well. We'll do a few more videos coming up about the details on our car and, and some of the things we've done to it. We've had the car for two years now, and we've pretty much got an idea of everything we can do and need to do to it, which is really helpful. If you've got any questions, shoot us a question in the comments. Uh, we're always replying to everyone. We'll always do our best to reply to everyone as quick as possible with whatever information you need as well. This sort of setup isn't necessarily for everybody, but it works really well for us. And I feel like it's a really simple, uh, practical way to set up the back of the patrol, keeping an eye on weight and everything like that as well, which is quite important. It'd really mean a lot to us if you could give the video a like, share it around to your friends if you've got any friends that are in the market for a rear setup as well. I'll put the links below to some of the products we've used and where to get them. We've got some discount codes as well for you guys to use, which is hopefully uh, helpful for buying some of the stuff. We'll also put a link to Adelaide Draw Systems below as well. Give him a message if you're in the market for some drawers. Uh, really great guy, great to deal with. Easy. Thanks, guys.